What's up, Internet? Kevin here with TLD, bringing you our review of the Ouya. So a couple of weeks ago, we got this in the mail, which John had completely forgotten about ordering back when the hype for it was at its peak. Since then, I've been trying it out, gathering my thoughts, and now we're ready to bring you guys our full review. So, first off, the system definitely accomplishes its goal of being portable. Right out of the box, we see that it's just this tiny little cube, weighing less than a pound and only requiring two cables for setup a power and HDMI cable for hooking up to your TV. The only other thing you need, of course, to play is the controller, with the stock one coming with the system being one of the most uncomfortable ones I've ever used. Not only does it feel really flimsy and frail, but it has really uncomfortable grips, and a really awkward feeling D-pad, no form of grip on the control sticks, and one of the oddest forms of battery replacement I've ever seen. Luckily, however, one of the niftiest features that the UEA has that I really like is the ability to use any USB controller, and it also communicates via Bluetooth meaning I was able to hook up and sync my PS3 DualShock controller to the system, allowing me to use that instead. Now whether or not you can use other controllers does depend on the game you're playing itself, some of them may only allow the Ouya one, however a lot of them not only use other controllers but practically endorse them in some situations. When it comes to its actual performance as a gaming system, the Ouya has some great ideas, but for the time being falls short in a lot of ways. First off, a majority of the catalog currently available are things you can already get via other Android devices, and in a lot of these cases, the games are poorly ported with bad frame rates or awkward controls or interfaces that remind you it was originally intended for a touchscreen. Other titles that were designed exclusively for the system take on a noticeably retro theme for the most part, mostly being indie titles trying to recapture older glory days of 8-bit gaming, some of which are genuinely really fun and with the right group of friends can make the $100 investment easily worth it. Now, one of the coolest things about the Ouya is its business model for purchasing games. Everything is completely digital and all games must have either a trial version or a free-to-play version with in-game purchases. This means that as soon as you get the system, you're free to try whatever you want before you pay for it, and in some cases, the games don't even really require a purchase to get the full value out of them, and are instead simply a way for you as a consumer to show support for indie game development. As I said earlier, a number of the games at launch have been hit and miss, ranging from being good ports and interesting exclusive titles, to horribly adapted mobile games, or just plain bad titles. Thankfully, you never really have to worry about paying money for a bad game, since you can simply try it and make your mind up pretty quickly. The system's online store also isn't too shy of showing off its capabilities as an emulation device, as a number of the top recommended or most downloaded games are actually emulation software that allows players to play some of their favorite old school classics that have been obtained through the internet. Now one of the most interesting aspects of the Ouya that I really think will help it stay alive in the current console war is the fact that it not only comes pre-installed with the dev kit so you can make your own games, but it's one of the first options you see right on the main menu. This means that individual gamers are encouraged to make their indie titles for the system, and make them available to other Ouya users, which, if it were to build up the right kind of community, could develop into a very interesting prospect for up-and-coming designers looking for a way to share their games. Now several of these features make the Ouya an interesting, portable $100 variant to other consoles, especially for those looking to support the indie game movement over just big name publishers, though some of their games are still available as well, like Final Fantasy III. What its greatest hindrance seems to be to me, however, is that there really isn't a whole lot it can offer that isn't already available by either owning an Android device or just having a decent knowledge of PC gaming, outside of what exclusive titles it has and how portable it is. I've also had numerous problems involving the internet connection dropping at random moments, and the Bluetooth also freaks out every now and then, not allowing me to connect a controller that I've already used with it once before. Also, while the USB controller option is awesome, the system only has one USB port, meaning that you'll have to attach a hub to it if you want you and your friends to use more than just the Ouya controllers or synced PS3 controllers if you have any. Ultimately, the Ouya is a console that relies heavily on what kind of community it can build in the future. And while it doesn't have the greatest number of unique experiences just yet, with the right firmware updates and game releases, it could definitely grow into something much greater than it currently is. While I don't intend to use it a ton just yet, I definitely plan to hook it up every now and then to see what games have been added to the library, and hopefully see it grow with time. Well, that was our review of the Ouya. While they're a little hard to find right now, if you guys are interested in checking out pricing and where you can actually pick one up, we'll have links down below. Aside from that, as always, I'm Kevin from TLD. If you guys enjoyed this vid, make sure to hit that like button as this is the easiest way to help out the channel and I always appreciate it. And if you have yet to do so, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.